News from News 12 New York, a new way to see the best of our channels across the tri-state area, all in one place, streaming now. Tracking Thunderbolt right now. We have been driving around in Thunderbolt 12, giving you a live look at the road conditions. Letting you know what we're seeing to keep you safe, to keep you warm. Let's take a look outside of the front windshield. Every left and right we take is so slow. There are a lot of bells and whistles on Thunderbolt 12. It is outfitted and equipped with weather sensing equipment. Thunderbolt 12 providing you with the latest update on the weather. Well, another huge day in our recovery in New York City, the one time epicenter of the pandemic in the US announcing today it is dropping its school mask mandate. Mayor Eric Adams also expected to drop the city's key to NYC vaccine mandate that requires customers to show proof of vaccination to enter indoor spaces. Those changes expected to take effect on Monday and schools in New Jersey set to drop their own mask mandates for students this coming Monday as well. And Florida Governor Ron DeSantis telling some high school students at a press conference to take off their masks, saying, quote, we got to stop with this COVID feeder. I'm Macy Egland in for Elizabeth Hashegan. Welcome to our live special report, The New Normal. We appreciate you being with us. Today we are focused on keeping safe. Now that the masks are coming off in schools, stores, and in many workplaces as well, Dr. Amna Hussein is here today. She is a pediatrician in New Jersey joining us. Thank you so much for taking the time, Dr. Hussein, to be with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So we've got a lot to talk about. Remember, we want to hear from you, our viewers. For the next half an hour, we will be answering your questions. So you can submit them right now on the live stream of this show on all of our Facebook pages, and we will take your questions in just a few minutes. But today, the focus of the show is staying safe with these relaxed mask guidelines and mandates. For many, it's way too soon. For others, it's been a long time coming, and it's long overdue. So again, today, Today, the mayor of New York City is expected to announce that the city will drop its school mask mandate. Those changes set to take effect on Monday, but not for kids under the age of five. There still isn't a vaccine for them, as we know. So we are going to dig in deeper with that with Dr. Hussein in just a little bit. Also on Monday next week, New Jersey students take off the masks in the state of New York. We know kids were able to take them off this past Wednesday in Connecticut. The masks became optional on Monday of this week. So so these mandates are relaxing. That's a good sign. We're really starting to get more of that kind of normal feel in our day to day lives, but the threat isn't gone. And as I mentioned, not everyone can be vaccinated. So now the question is, how do we keep them safe? So these mask mandates, Dr. Hussein, in indoor spaces and schools officially uh, changed with these, this recent update to the CDC mask guidelines that looks at different levels of risk based on infection rates for each region. So can you explain that for our viewers, these updated CDC guidelines? Sure. So the updated CDC recommendations, um, they are, just like you mentioned, trying to take into regards individual transmission rates. So we're looking at relaxing mitigation measures based on, I try to describe it as three main things. So decreased transmission rates in the community, uh, so low COVID-19 transmission rates, decreased or low hospital admission rates, and then an adequate hospital capacity. And that's really to keep things sort of churning in a reasonable fashion so that we're not overwhelming our hospital system. The guidelines do also take into effect the fact that if we do see the transmission rates in the community going up, put those masks back on. My only really um, hesitation here is how many individuals at this point are actively tracking uh, transmission rates in their area and not only that we are we do know that once transmission rates are high it's a little bit too late to put those masks back on mm -hmm. right there's a little bit of a lag between the time of transmission and then the couple of days later when you can actually see hospital admission rates increase that's not to say that i think masks need to stay around for the rest of our lives i just i worry in terms of relaxing the mitigation measures when we don't have equal protection amongst all age groups, just like you mentioned for the children under five. And as a pediatrician, this is something I see every single day. It's an intricate part of really my job every day with parents and young children. 
Right, so these masks coming off now in schools, we always see a spike around the holidays we have in the past at least, and now that the masks are coming off in schools, do you as a pediatrician expect to see a spike in cases because of that? Well, I am reassured by a couple of things. One, that we are coming out of a surge. We're not quite out of it yet, and it was one of the worst surges we've seen. It was actually almost three times the number of positive cases that we saw during Delta. So we are on the downtrend. That's something positive that I wanna focus on. The other positive thing is that while masks are coming off, we are venturing into springtime. So hopefully more events can be outdoors and we know transmission risks are much lower outdoors. So even if the masks are off, I feel I would feel comfortable with my two children, both under five, not yet vaccine eligible, that if we were to be able to go to an event, let's say outdoors or participate in something outdoors without a mask, that would make me feel a little bit more comfortable. Uh